is you here today? What, what are you going to be speaking about on stage with this? Well, it's called Change Culture Now. And um, it has a bunch of uh, kind of ex explanatory other titles, but they don't really matter because at the end of the day, unless we start doing the right things culture-wise, all of this other conversation we've done today about what's coming up, what innovation is, what technology is, is absolutely worthless. Let's talk a little bit about company culture in that case, because I love talking about this. My, my favorite example, um, I'm a big Disney fan, and I think the smartest thing Disney ever did was buy Pixar, not because of the IP and all that, it's because the- The innovation culture, the yeah. culture. It, it absorbed into Disney, and it was it was incredible. Why why is that not happening in, in financial services? What's the what, what's the issue there? It's a very good question. I, uh, I I used to joke that I left financial services. I'm not sure I've left them really, but um, when I left financial services, I was surprised by the depth of the conversation that happens in other industries when it comes to culture, as compared to what happens in banking. Um, I, I was surprised is a mild way of putting it. I am absolutely flabbergasted as to what's happening in terms of, of senses of urgencies that don't exist. So if you look at pharma or you look at retail or you look at um, manufacturing, they do incredible amounts to figure out how to get their people in order because they've bought all the technology, they've finished all the servers. So what they need to do now is make sure that their people are capable to perform at their top abilities. It's a very logical conclusion, not a conclusion that has reached the bankers just yet. So Why? Yeah, Good question. That's, that, Why? Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. We're behind in the industry in terms of, of making big moves that are genuinely changing. Um, Agile came to the financial services later. It never really landed. It, it needs a change of mentality that doesn't necessarily come to bankers easily. Um, once Agile showed up, what we'll find out is that we cannot have it do for us what we want it to do for us, produce money moments, make um, the, the products we're making for our financial services customers any better, until such a time that we have managed to, to sort our house with people-wise, until our people are engaged, they're passionate, they want to help, they, they have the innovation ability and the psychological safety that the pick stars of the world have. We are never going to win. It doesn't matter what technology we buy, what technology we implement, what kind of agile transformation we try. Nothing is going to happen until banks, and some banks are moving, but not enough, until everyone wakes up and works on the culture bit. Can you think of any organization out there that is doing this, doing this well that w within the context of financial services and why they're the ones that are doing, doing, doing it well? I always dread this question at, all, at, at every interview um, because the real answer to that is no. I can't think of one bank that's doing this well. In that case, let's open it up a little bit further. Any company that's doing that slight innovation well. Yes. Um, you'll have your, your pharmaceuticals that have went above and beyond changing all of their technology structure in astounding ways. You have your, like I said, some, some automotive that's moving. All of the sustainability industry is moving these days. Yes, there are industries where things are being built with people at the center from the go, and where even if they haven't started that way, they're very smart in doing a turnaround and a serious piece of change. Whereas I have yet to tell you that there is any bank that's in the middle of a cultural transformation. None. Okay. The obvious next question is, so how do we get them to do that cultural transformation? Because a, a lot of the time, I, it seems to me that there is a very big, big difference between private companies that have got to file accounts once a year, le under less scrutiny, and they're, less, they're, they're, they're more long-term thinking than if you have to file quarterly reports that you're dealing with very kind of short-term thinking. So is, is there something almost from the top? What, what, what can be actually done? I like the way you framed it. Um, many people want to blame the, the, the sluggish of, of banks, which let's face it, we've been talking about the same things for 15 years. Yep. Just the two of us, forget other people. But um, um, we want to blame it on legacy, we want to blame it on, on risk, we want to blame it on uh, the regulator. But realistically, what, it, what we're looking at in banking is um, 
a bigger crisis of engagement than in other industries. And your banking employees, much as some of them are superheroes and they're living through horrendous situations, still trying to make change, the vast majority of them are only there for the next five minutes. They have no real vested interest in, in things moving forward which makes things a lot harder. So I think the, the solution is the same as every other industry, which is we have to fix the workplace crisis. The workplace crisis are around leadership, they're around um, EQ, they're around uh, mental health. Once we fix those, then they will be fixed in banking enough for us to do a cultural transformation. But it's never going to be the other way around, unfortunately, in financial services. Uh, I, 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 get, I see the passion there <laughs> behind this, Emo emotional banking. Yeah, that nice, ni nice little ob ob plug for you. But what I kind of want to delve into a little bit now is where does this come from for you personally? Why is this something that you know you've kind of you've got that? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what? Who hurt you? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> what What happened? Why is this such at the forefront of your mind? Um, I, I, I tell this story a lot, so some of the people listening to this might be super bored of it, but I've had a midlife crisis, um, I think. There's the, the, the only explanation to it is I was writing emotional banking and I was arriving at all of these um, realizations about a term that I call human debt, which is essentially everything that we've left on the table that isn't clear for the humans in the organization, meaning you know all of those surveys that are not right, compensation that's not right, the way we get people in, the way we keep them unhappy, all of those things are not okay. They all amass into this human debt. So I, I realized that th this concept exists, I thought of it, and I just went like, let me at it. I need to fix this in more than banking. There's many industries that have the same problem. Um, and so my next thought was, I will not be sitting around uh, and telling them the story in a boardroom as a consultant because let's face it, everyone does that. And as a consultant, as in particular if you start talking to boards, it's almost heartbreaking because you have these moments where you genuinely have communion and you feel like you completely are on the same page and then everyone exits the room and nothing happens. It, and I can't do that. So I knew very early on it will drive me insane after making products. So together with a couple of super veterans, we've, we've put together a piece of software because my thinking was, let's face it, everyone can do consultancy and write books and I'm on my third, I know it's doable, but um, do what, what remains, what makes genuine change is allowing and empowering your teams to do this change themselves. So we've created a piece of software that helps with the human work, that helps the teams themselves help themselves. Very kind of you. Thank you.